All right. Cool. Uh, well, once again, uh, thank you so much for taking the time today to speak to us and congratulations on what's so far been a fantastic road to WrestleMania. Thank you. I feel, uh, I feel like every week is sprinkled in with some, you know, the road to WrestleMania always is special for a viewer and as a wrestler and competitor performer, it's always, it's the most special season in, in what we do. But I feel like it's been sprinkled with just more magic than I envisioned. Uh, I'm I'm still giddy off of just the uh, the idea of uh, having a moment with one of my my former mentors, with that being John Cena uh, mm -hmm. on Monday Night Raw in his hometown. Um, these are things I will not take for granted. Uh, you know, the road to WrestleMania. I'd love to be on it again next year and again at the year after that, but. I very much am uh, present and here uh, on this one right now. Right. And I'm glad you mentioned that on Monday night, seeing the exchange between you and him at the TD Garden. Uh, what, if you're comfortable sharing with us, what is it that he said to you at the top of the ramp there when you had that exchange? <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I would say like normally, you know, I'm not, it's a secret, but the truth is we're pretty mic'd up. So I feel like it wasn't necessarily a secret. I can tell you, I, I tweeted something about rewarding their noise. That wasn't what he said to me in that moment. That was something he said to me when we were driving around, gosh, in 2009 or 10, when I was driving him around trying to pick his brain for those few years, uh, that was something I never forgot that he said that, that as a, in the ring, he was always applying in terms of when they do something, you must do something and, and just a master teacher in that. And that's not everyone applies that. And I always took it and wanted to apply it. Uh, actually, what I was trying to do in that moment, other than a, than thank yous and and sincere gratitude for 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 that moment, I told him uh, if he does another one of these, uh, I'd love to absolutely uh, be the, be that one. And he actually said, I can't promise that. And, uh, I'm pretty sure that's all caught on camera or on, uh, on, on the mics, but I, I definitely uh, want him to know that, you know, you, you want your, your mentors and your heroes to, you want to grow as tall as them, but you also want to test them. And, uh, if it never happens by gosh, it's not, I have, uh, an incredible experience, uh, with him. And then, and I've had an incredible experience as a fan watching what he what he did for WWE and what he continues to do. But I absolutely wouldn't put it past me to to want to see what it looks like uh, John Cena versus Cody Rhodes because if it ever happened, uh, it it didn't really happen. You know, it, it, the people we are now are are far different. Uh, the American Nightmare is a far different cat uh, than I was previously there. So that would be special. But again. He's got a tall order with Austin Theory. Austin Theory is extremely hardworking and chip on his shoulder, angry, uh, young superstar, young wrestler. And I, I know what that's like. Um, you, know, you mentioned driving around and with that being in the, the mid aughts. And I want to go a, a little further back now to ask something hyper localized. I've read both your father's book and your brother's book. And they describe your journey pre your WWE journey where you mentioned um, or they mentioned rather your forays into the world of acting. And I'm curious yeah. um, now with WrestleMania, the theme this year, WrestleMania goes Hollywood and with it being in Los Angeles and with you mentioning the certain uh, serendipity that is surrounding the road to WrestleMania this season. Uh, do you what are your memories of like or do you have any particular ones of being in Los Angeles and trying to uh, get into the acting field prior to WWE? So uh, I just got a my publicist just sent me a beautiful photo on Sunset Boulevard of this giant picture of Roman and myself. And I can't help serendipity is a great way to look at it. I can't help but feel obviously really emboldened because when I was out there at ni 19 years old, I was thinking acting would be it for me because I thought maybe physically I wasn't big enough to be a wrestler, which is hilarious because now I'm one of the bigger wrestlers in terms of size. Uh, but the industry, who knows? Uh, I, uh, I, my memories of, uh, of the many times that I've lived in LA is, is 
that I had a great experience with Howard Fine, who was my acting coach and props to him. He's a longtime wrestling and sports entertainment fan himself. He was a big Chief J fan. Uh, going through Howard's uh, comprehensive technique class and, uh, you know, teaching out of the book of Uta Hagen, A Challenge for the Actor, was very, very helpful when I realized, yeah, I'm in the wrong world. Uh, my, uh, the, the route I needed to be taking is, uh, is towards Louisville, Kentucky, OVW and pro wrestling. But I carried everything I got from Howard with me all the way to the point where at the nightmare factory today, I do the beginners camps and the beginners all get, uh, either two books, they get fine on acting or they get Uta Hagen a challenge for, for the actor. Uh, because in as far as entertainment goes, and there's always a suspension of disbelief and wrestling, what it is, what's real, what's not, um, those uh, those pieces of literature can be very helpful for a young uh, young wrestler. You want to learn how to do a Canadian destroyer? We'll teach you that too. Uh, but uh, also, I want you to read this book. Uh, you'll be better for having both. Nice, cool, good to know. So. With speaking of things that you've taken with you over the course of your journey, uh, when you parted ways from WWE in 2016 and the time after that, I actually had the tremendous fortune uh, to see you compete twice during that time in person. Once uh, I'm actually coming to you live from Minneapolis right now and your match with uh, Colt Cabana for Heavy on Wrestling. And then oh, I was wow. Yeah. And then I was also uh, at the Tokyo Dome for uh, Wrestle Kingdom 11 for uh, your first Juice Robinson encounter. Sure. So with that journey that you've taken in the years between before returning to WWE, and uh, there's been some talks and rumors online that there's going to be uh, references to that within your gear for WrestleMania night. Uh, sure. What has doing those, um, let's say, different audience, more intimate shows, what have you taken from those, if anything, with you now during your WWE return in terms of how you choose to perform? Uh, the answer is simple. For if someone who does who's quite an oversharer like myself, uh, everything, mm -hmm. everything. I I got a great education in the industry. Growing up in it, I had a highest level education. Going through WWE for the ten years that I was there, the first time I got to be in the ring with guys while they were still active: Undertaker, Shawn Michaels, Triple H. Uh, invaluable lessons but leaving and something about the revolution that's happening in 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 our world in our business is not confined to any company it's in the hearts and minds of wrestlers superstars but also the audience and and i've been i was able to i feel like take that almost weaponize it and 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 take that everywhere i go but every little piece on that two-year jaunt where i was at every indie under the sun for two years and not just that ring of honor new japan impact uh all those places every piece of it is invaluable to the type of i feel like i i'm as almost cold as ice in the ring these days in a sense that you cannot rattle me you cannot shake me uh whatever is done i'm i'm ready to lean in and 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 apply it. And I think that's what puts me in a position to consider myself one of the very best in the world. And to be the best in the world, you have to, of course, stand across from Roman Reigns and uh, put his shoulders on the mat for a three count. And that is what we're looking to do uh, in, in Hollywood. And that's what we're hopeful for. And that's what we're training for. But uh, it's not a spoiler anymore. You mentioned it and it's not secret. Uh, the belt's going to have two sides, the weight belt that I wear to the ring and the side that will be inside. They've been able to print on both sides that will be, I guess, just for me, but it'll be in there is the name of every uh, independent promotion, uh, plus some other names that I worked for along the journey. And then on the camera side of the belt, it will say something else. Um, that one I'll keep secret, I suppose, but I'm very happy to carry all that with me. Without it, I would not be the person and professional I am today. And I'm glad you went to that show. I remember that match very well. It was a unique, unique show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fun, wonderful night. 
So as will, I'm sure WrestleMania will be, you are, as you mentioned, will be facing Roman Reigns. And as we discussed earlier, the certain serendipity of this particular road to WrestleMania, uh, not just your father with the hand he had in training your opponent, but also as we saw a few weeks back uh, with your in-ring promo with Paul Heyman and just so many parts where the stars are aligning, where real life is going so much with the the entertainment and the craft of it all. Do you find when so much of real life becomes intertwined with, you know, what is uh, televised live theater, uh, does that give uh, any particular roadblocks or difficulties or do you find it solely enhances? I feel uh, I have the you know, I've I've said it a bunch and it's really the best way to kind of for me to wrap my head around it is I have the privilege and the responsibility but also the burden of I do not play a character uh, I play myself and that means that Pat McAfee put it my whole life has been the road <laughs> uh, to WrestleMania and potentially finishing this this wonderful story and, and, and starting anew. Uh, it makes it difficult to know where the line is. Uh, but uh, if anyone could be more adjusted and self-aware at the, at this point, uh, I, I feel I've really mentally set myself up for, uh, I I'm okay. I'm okay with it. I am. Uh, if you meet me walking through a supermarket or, walking through the airport and and I, I'm always incredibly happy to hear that someone's going to be at WrestleMania or they want to see me uh, beat Roman. It's very much, it's real, right? In mm -hmm. a world where it's hard to tell, it, it's real. And I was just talking in another interview where I said, you know, one day I hope I find the line. I hope I find it because uh, it's it seems like uh, every we're all we're all together in this, but that's how I want it. That's how I, I hope I walk into SoFi and uh, and know that uh, I'm not alone. Mm -hmm. So going into your personal ritual and and with especially when you mentioned this, being in such an ever changing industry, you made your return to WWE last year, and with mm -hmm. all the public changes that have happened in the years since uh have you noticed any uh, particular differences between your you know surprise return last year and leading into wrestlemania this year uh not for me personally okay. and i think it almost the last question almost kind of in, uh, informs this answer as well mm -hmm. because because of who i returned as was so i have a grasp on it the American nightmare is really not the name sounds wild and ridiculous, but the, it's not so much performative as much as I know uh, who I am. And I even said it on raw, I'm, I'm ready. And there's been a trust that's been placed in me by WWE. Uh, and that, that may be the highest honor in all of this. So for me, I haven't noticed. I kind of chuckle when I see, uh, you know, I have friends in the media and, you, oh, such and such, this is changing, and this sale might happen, and this might happen. And and being on the ground and seeing it, I just, I we've just had great shows, and fans seem really happy, and uh, and we've been on this road to WrestleMania. It's been very consistent. Um, so, yeah, I, nothing personally has changed for me or made it difficult uh, in terms of maybe it is, and I just don't see it, but I uh, I've been able to – start how I did coming back at WrestleMania, especially that roll after mania. And I feel like it's was heading towards one spot and that's the main event of this WrestleMania. And you mentioned returning and, you know, with you being you, with you being so definitively Cody and so much of that is in the full presentation that we've seen in your return, that you've been mm -hmm. you know, the Cody that's evolved over the past years and your departure from WWE, from the look with the military regalia and the, and the entrance. I wanted to ask, mm -hmm. and especially with a certain thing that has evolved on its own, uh, your entrance music, the, uh, the downstream yeah. theme. And with now the crowds have, you know, adding the woes to it when they've just uh, organically <laughs> in, and then as of last Monday, singing the entire song along with it yeah. as it comes to the ring. So going back to that, I'm curious initially, and I know there was a Snoop Dogg remix, but speaking very early on, uh, how many iterations did that go through? And did you envision it being something that would be such a call and response with the crowd? 
you know, I remember uh, telling uh, telling the crew from uh, Downstate that they had suggested there was, there was a song called Throne. Uh, mm-hmm. And I remember listening to that song, a, a similar story about, you know, being, you know, thrown to the wilderness and coming back to the leader of the pack. And it just had a real growing yourself and and finding yourself story to it. And also including the times when you felt like you had uh, injustice had been happened to you and then coming back and serving justice. This is all sounds very dramatic, but you know, they're, uh, they're putting this song together. I only wanted to put my words at the beginning in terms of wrestling families. There really were only the two iterations. Uh, my man who will also be at WrestleMania uh, Snoop Dogg, hmm. uh, Put a, put a, a spin on it that I will forever be grateful and uh, and so excited because at the time we were doing our our game show together the Go Big Show and that was just to have Snoop be there and and Snoop I'd also add to a long list of people who for no reason other than he's a wonderful human being decided to take me under his wing a little bit and give me some advice about the the industry entertainment overall and uh, and. I'm very happy he's like part of the family that he's going to be at WrestleMania. When it comes to those two iterations, I, I'd have to downstate's amazing that they, they were there for me. They'd actually done music for me previously, but this song kingdom itself, I'm glad uh, it's Spotify numbers are absurd and I'm glad it's cooking and I'm glad it will go everywhere with me and it will stay that way. And it has so far, but I have to definitely give props. I know WWE always likes to be anonymous and that's great. I'm not anonymous, so someone cut me off. But I'd have to give props to Kevin Dunn for he never even flinched. Heard the song, uh, and the song has the word wrestling in it, which I thought, oh, that could that could be tricky. Heard the song, nobody for one moment flinched. Made sure they cranked it up at the beginning even. I want them to hear it. And that was very helpful because that's can't have a, can't have Cody Rhodes without Kingdom, I think. And People learning the words is wild to me, and I I hope I hope it just continues. You know, I I, I don't even know if I know all the words, but uh, they they seem to know them, and it's very uh, special. And I'm very lucky I get to hear that on Mondays and Fridays and over the weekend. Wonderful. Well, uh, thank you so much for your time. Um, uh, before we wrap, just two quick things I wanted to share with you. One, uh, yeah. as I mentioned, I'm from Minneapolis, and your father yeah. was in the movie The Wrestler in '74. Yeah, never got anyone. Uh, the bar that 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 his scene was shot in, Mazelax, not only still exists, it looks exactly the same. Oh so, wow! So next time you're in Minnesota, if you want to stop by Mazelax, because I was when I went in there, I was looking around like, why do I know this place? And then when it hit me, yeah, exactly the same. That's and, cool because his mm-hmm. his documentary comes out the week before Mania and the that wrestler scene is in there. Oh, nice, nice, cool. Yeah, that's really yeah. cool. Yeah, and uh, second, um, so uh, I lost my father the day after Christmas this past year, and I'm so sorry. I, I appreciate that. And wrestling has you know always been such an escape. So this particular uh, build to this year has been so comforting and cathartic. I just wanted to personally thank you for that, and I'm looking forward no, the, to seeing on Peacock. Thank you. And you take it home. Thank you very, very much. And uh, man, if I can tell you anything, I'll tell you what uh, Brody Lee told me. You know, his dad passed away when he was uh, when he was young. He said, uh, I told him, I go, man, it just feels like it just happened. You know, X amount of times gone by. And he told me it had been 10 years and him and his mom still felt the same way. Mm-hmm. And at that point in his life, he felt like that's a good thing because we're it's still raw and it's still connected. And the only reason it's raw and it's connected is because how powerful it was in the first place. So, you know, it's uh, everyone's journey, man. I, I, I wish you well on it. Thank you. And I uh, wish you well. And I wish you well uh, at uh, the big grandest stage of them all at WrestleMania. Thank uh, you, my friend. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Thanks. Bye.